understanding of the medley was felt by the Lord and the Lord unlifted. to worship this morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you have to start with the right words. It's hard to respond to welcome to worship this morning, isn't it? Well, we welcome all of you who've joined us online as well. It's good to have you here with us worshiping 
the Lord together, connected by the Holy Spirit, who loves us and claims us as God's children. Today, a thank you to Dave and Jeannie for that awesome duet that started us in the, exactly the right place. And uh, welcome to any visitors who are here today. It's good to have you here. We trust that you feel God's presence here in this place. We just want to make a couple tech, tech announcements. One is that you can find our Facebook page by going to First English Lutheran Church, Wisconsin Rapids. And we have added to that um, a Monday Musings where you can put in your comments in answer to a question about the Sunday sermon. And we would love you to visit there every Monday morning, partly to, to stimulate conversation among members, um, but also just to know that we're connected. And I'm saying this especially to those of you that we don't see here at church, that we would know you're still there and we can have conversation with you online. Also, if you would visit our new website like 22 times a day or something for a while, um, we've taken down, or it's being taken down, our old website, and now we need to establish our new website as a place people go so that it will pop up when people Google First English Lutheran or Google Lutheran churches in our area. The, the new um, URL, or our new address is on the front of your bulletin, felwisrapids.org. If you go there, click on a few connections, you will establish your visit, and it will start adding up, and pretty soon we will have a, a stronger presence online. If you are a Googler and you look for everything there, you know how it, important it is for the right things to pop up at the right time. So that's how you can help us with that. A reminder, too, that um, our summer picnic is just three weeks away. On August 7th in the afternoon, please sign up to bring something and plan to come. And we're saying that to those of you we haven't seen here for a while. It would be great to see you again. Bring your lawn chairs. And we'll just enjoy time talking and eating and then sharing a devotional around the campfire and some music. And that's all we're going to talk about this morning in announcements. So please stand and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come into your presence this morning remembering that you are the one who sits on the throne, the Lamb who was slain, and the Holy Spirit, all three in one. We are coming into your presence, and it is mighty and awesome. Forgive us when we do it too casually, too nonchalantly, almost as if you owe it to us. We pray that you will convince us over and over that we come into your presence because you love us and are gracious and forgiving to us. Enable us this morning as we worship you to grasp more deeply the greatness, the power, the love that you have for us. Help us to hear and see and be able to apply to our hearts what you give us through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear God's words of forgiveness for you. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and has made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please remain standing as we sing together, Let All Things Now Living. Let us pray together. Eternal, Eternal God, God, you draw, you draw near, near to us in Christ, Christ and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of life, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 2 and 10 to 14. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm of my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, and it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in the ages to come. The earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble. The sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars 
withdraw their shining. The Lord utters his voice at the head of his army. How vast is his host. Numberless are those who obey his command. Truly, the day of the Lord is great, terrible indeed. Who can endure it? Yet, even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. So to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord or God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Good morning, Faith. You were gone last week. Said a girl's got to take a break sometimes. <laughs> I fully agree. <laughs> yeah, so you came back excited to be here? Yeah, so I was wondering what we should talk about today, and I thought maybe you'd like to tell us, all of us, what you're thankful for. Have you thought about that lately? No? What is it? Is it easy to forget what we're thankful for? Yeah, sometimes it is. We take good things for granted. So what are the, I don't know, you tell me, how many things are you thankful for today? You're thankful to be here? Yeah, I am too. What else? I'm thankful I don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. How come you don't have to worry? Because her mom and dad take good care of her. Yeah, and anything else? Because she knows Jesus loves her, and Jesus helps your parents take good care of you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Oh my goodness, you got on a, you started rolling down the hill there. You thought of so many things. Sounds to me like everywhere you look, you see good things and you see blessings and you know God is with you and you know that tomorrow is coming and God will be with you tomorrow too, as well as your family. That is a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. Sounds like you have a lot of hope. I have a twin sister named Hope. I know you do. We're going to have to get her out here with us sometime. Yeah. Mr. Davis wants Hope to come too. He hasn't thought about how hard that might be for me. <laughs> well, I think today we should all, for a minute, we're going to have a little tiny bit of silence. Just think about what we're most thankful for today. Because the sermon is kind of hard today, and we all need to be thankful before we get there. Okay. Ready? Go. Yeah, I think they have thought of something. Let's all thank God for what we're thankful for. How's <laughs> that? Let's pray. Dear Jesus. Dear, Dear Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. For all you. you've cared, all the ways you care for us. Thank you for all the ways you care for us. And for this moment right now. And for this moment right now. And for your word. And, and for, for your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See you next week. Please stand.
The first time Horace and I made the trip from Appleton to Wisconsin Rapids, we weren't sure how far it was or how long it would take. But you know how it is when you're going somewhere the first time, it can feel like the trip is never going to end. And that's how we were feeling by the time we hit Plover. Certainly, we thought it would just be another mile or two. And then we saw the green sign there in Plover, Wisconsin Rapids, 15. And we both just groaned out loud, how could it be? 15 more miles, really? Hadn't we traveled far enough? Wasn't it just two more minutes or so? Well, if you're starting to have that feeling about Revelation, you can empathize with the first people who heard this vision read to them because they were thinking, of course, that Christ was going to come back very soon. And so they'd heard, you know, as they, as they listened to the story told, that certainly any second we're going to turn to the page where it says, and here comes Jesus. Certainly it must be just another mile or two. Well, here's what they had heard already. They'd heard a personal message to each of the seven churches. And then they'd heard about seven seals being opened on this great big scroll that as they were opened, it set God's plans in motion. And, and during that time, and we talked about that last week, the great injustices of the Roman Empire were unveiled as the four horsemen thundered across the stage of the story. And then they saw and heard the, the martyrs who had died for Jesus Christ, crying out for justice from under the altar of God. And almost as if in answer to their cries, natural disasters occurred. And then they waited for the seventh seal, and hopefully the seventh seal would be Jesus' return to earth. And instead there was just absolute silence in heaven. Now, in Jewish thought, it was absolutely quiet before creation and absolutely quiet at the end of all time. So, was this an ending or a beginning? Both. It's the end of the seals. That's one story of things. And now it's the beginning of the trumpets. And there are seven of them. It's become obvious to them already that God's plans are not going to play out quickly. These are long-term plans for the people of God and for all of God's creation. These are long-term calls to repentance for those who disobey God's call to them. And they are long-term reassurances for those who are obeying God amidst evil empire, persecution for their faith, and great distress. God's time is not human time. So get in the car and buckle up. Let's get ready for the seven trumpets. Another of God's seven-step processes to both encourage and to warn. Today, because there's so much subject matter, and I'm not going to get as far as it says in the bulletin, there's just no way, but rather than digging into the intricate meanings of each trumpet, I'm going to look at some really broad truths about what the trumpets mean and how God views those who are oppressed. We're going to stop after the sixth trumpet and pick it back up with the seventh, and I think you'll be grateful that that's what we do. I've used the first slide from a website I discovered this week. Now, if you'd like to go to that website, it's really in-depth Bible study, and it really connects the Old Testament to the New Testament in some wonderful ways, and it's called Hello hyphen Bible. If you leave out the hyphen, you get to a whole series of children's stuff. So that's not where I'm directing you. I'm, I'm directing you to hello hyphen Bible. 
And um, the author really focuses, when you find the revelation part, really focuses on the true purpose of revelation, which is to encourage and give hope. And we see it in, this, in the title, don't we? Oh, this is the wrong slide. Can you go back one? It didn't come through. Okay, well, here's what it says. It's a picture and everything. It says, the seven trumpets, God's signal to remind us that he hears the prayers of his children. Let me say that again. The trumpets are God's signal to remind us that he hears the prayers of his children. Wouldn't it be great if every time you prayed, a trumpet went off and, oh, God's got it. Well, that's part of what the trumpets mean in this vision. In Numbers 8, 10, 8 through 10, we read, and now this is way back in the Old Testament, the times of, time of Moses back in there, the sons of Aaron, the priests, are to blow the trumpets. This is to become a lasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into battle in your own land against an enemy who is oppressing you, Sound a blast on the trumpets. Then you will be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. I am the Lord your God. The trumpets were to be blown like an alarm so God would remember God's people. But we know God doesn't need us to blow trumpets to remember us. But it was an audible cue for the Israelites for them to remember that God hadn't forgotten them, even in the worst of times. God had heard their prayers and was answering. Well, you notice that the trumpets come shortly in the vision right after the cries for justice had gone up from the martyrs who were under God's altar. So the trumpets are saying God has heard and the answer is coming comfort comfort but the trumpets are also warning and they're going to announce plagues that will fall upon the earth if the people don't acknowledge and obey God now for the the Israelite people the Jewish people who are now believers in Jesus Christ as soon as they hear, hear the word plague they're going to go back to their history and remember Moses and the liberation of the Israelites from the cruel Egyptian slavery hundreds and hundreds of years before. Their cries of justice moved God to liberate them through God's chosen person, Moses. You remember the story? I think you probably do, but I'm just going to give you really brief. God appears in a burning bush to Moses while he's tending sheep. And God calls him to go to Egypt to bring the people out of slavery. And here is, we can use that slide now, here is what God says about the people who are in slavery. I have seen the misery of my people. I've heard them crying out. I am concerned about their suffering. I love those words. Especially when I'm in misery or crying out or suffering. God sees. God hears. God cares. Throughout all of scripture, from the beginning to the end, God hates injustice. There's no way we can pretty it up for God. He hates injustice. We hate injustice when it hits us. God hates injustice for all. God's perfect love that we talk about so much is balanced by God's perfect justice. Injustice is an antithesis to God's character. He cannot abide it well we know the pharaoh of egypt didn't care about justice for the hebrew slaves he only cared about the bottom line and probably about his power and his legacy if he saw injustice he probably said well they deserve it 
Why don't they get their act together? But God cared enough to call Moses, who finally agreed to go to Egypt. And there he met with the Hebrew leaders and told them God had sent him because God was concerned about them. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned, let's have the next slide now. When they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshiped. God cares about us. What encouragement. God sees, God cares, God has not forgotten us. Well, Moses then approached Pharaoh in the name of God Almighty and gave God's message to him. Let my people go into the desert to worship me. Essentially, Pharaoh laughed at Moses and mocked God. And God had known all along this was going to happen. And he'd said to Moses, I know the king of Egypt will not let them go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let them go. That's from Exodus 3, 19 to 20. Do you see in God's character how warnings come first? Pharaoh would receive the warning. He'd have a chance to obey. Egypt's future did not have to be filled with plagues. But would Pharaoh, the oppressor, let God change his heart? That is the question, right? Well, he didn't let God change his heart. And through Pharaoh, we begin to see how God uses plagues for two purposes. We're going to have a slide on that. First, not that one, <laughs> slide four. First, the plagues are to bring oppressors to repentance. Get their attention. Bring them to their knees before God. So they will turn from their wicked ways and do what is right. Secondly, the plagues are to bring the oppressed to liberation. The oppressed to freedom. Let my people go, the voice of God commands the oppressors. And implicit in this is give my people back their God-given freedom, their dignity, their self-respect, and their right to live without fear, their right to worship me with their hearts. Now, I wanted to say all this before we even contemplate the seven trumpets, because the trumpets sound very harsh. They're warnings and unveilings of terrible plagues that are going to come upon the earth if the people continue to worship themselves, their idols, their evil ways. The first four trumpets are sounded by angels in quite rapid succession, and they have to do with the earth and the sea and the water and the sky. They're all hit by one form of destruction or another. None of these elements of God's creation is left untouched. But a, a number is given by how much is actually destroyed, and it's one-third. Now, that means an incomplete portion, right? One-third is not complete, as seven is. Now, if you think about history and the events within our history and in our world today, the, the bubonic plagues, the wars, COVID, AIDS, malaria, earthquakes, floods, volcanic eruptions, wildfires, hurricanes, typhoons, famine, those have touched and continue to touch our lives. 
Now think about the different human responses when these events impact people personally. Many turn to the Lord for help and comfort and strength. And we see that as people gather to worship when they've just lost their homes and their churches. Or during COVID when there were people who said, the Lord is teaching me a lot during this time. There's this willingness to be open to what God might want to be doing in our hearts and our lives. But many do not look at things that way. They just harden their hearts, as Pharaoh did. And they refuse to let God teach them and lead them and work through them during hard times. The fifth trumpet, also known as the first woe, brings great pain, but not death. Even though the pain, and it doesn't say if it's physical or emotional or spiritual, it doesn't say, it just says the pain makes people wish they were dead. At this point, the angel from the bottomless pit, who is Satan, emerges from the abyss. And now the imagery in this vision becomes a lot like Lord of the Rings. And if you haven't watched that, you should just watch it so you know what that is. Evil is full-blown ugliness. Bizarre, grotesque locusts emerge from the pit of the abyss. And they look like horses armed for battle with human faces, long hair, lion's teeth, and they're wearing golden crowns on their heads. Now, if we were trying to pick that apart and say what each of those is we would just get it all wrong. But we do know that the image of the human and the crown means both strength and intelligence. Their tails are scorpion tails, and they inflict pain on the humans who are not marked with the seal of God on their forehead. And remember, we talked about the infinite number of people who were marked with the seal of God before all of this came to be. And we talked about that being the seal on our foreheads at baptism. Well, if this isn't bad enough, the sixth trumpet is even worse. Do you notice that they begin to intensify? Almost the way... um, I was thinking about raising my kids. I'll tell you a story of my bad parenting. Um, My oldest son was, was... being disobedient and mouthing off. And I said, okay, no car for the week. And he mouthed off again. I said, two weeks. And he mouthed off again. I said, three weeks. And then it was the rest of your life. You know, it just intensified. And of course, by then it was so funny. But, but the fact is, when, when someone who is being disciplined is not responding, it has to get a little, a little harder. The next vision is harder. And, and now I have been living with this stuff all week, so I'm just glad it's <laughs> next week isn't going to be that much better. But, but this stuff is heavy. And if you were having this vision or seeing this, you would be just like this after a while. But the next vision, the next trumpet, calls forth a mighty invasion from the east. Now remember, Rome's greatest enemies enemy was Parthia, and they were right from the east. But in this vision, 200 million, if anyone can envision 200 million, riders and horses are approaching. And the horses have heads of lions, and fire and smoke and sulfur come out of their mouths, and their tails are serpents with heads that inflict great harm and kill one-third of humans. Now, this is horrifying, It would be overwhelming to see death heading towards you in that way. But we had a little bitty taste of it when COVID was here and in the beginning when we saw those huge refrigerated trucks next to hospitals to keep the corpses cool. When we saw the graves in Brazil and Argentina. It's horrifying and overwhelming to see death on the march. And this really reveals the full-blown effects 
of sin when it's allowed to flourish in our hearts and in our world. Death and destruction are the end of it. Now this is disturbing. But remember, it is a vision and it is a warning. It's a call to repent. A chance for humans to change the future. A chance to open our hearts and live lives in God's forgiveness and grace. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, God proclaims, and I find this interesting that he's calling to his people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. In our scripture reading from Joel today, we heard amidst a vision of destruction that God comes in and says, Yet even now, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he's gracious and he's merciful and he's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. That is God's desire for not just you and me, but all creation. Our God, holy three in one, calls his creation to account. But he also longs to save and forgive us. That's, that's his nature, to save and forgive. And he longs to see his whole creation flourishing in justice and peace and joy and gladness. And he longs for you and me to live with great purpose and great freedom as we serve others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So let those trumpets encourage you as well as warn you. God sees us. God hears us. God is concerned about us. Our God of love and justice hears our prayers and answers them. Let us hold fast to this truth as we walk in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, Change My Heart, O God. Children beloved by the Lord, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Ever-present God, in Christ you fill all things. As your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, Teach us to welcome your words of correction as well as your words of encouragement. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, though Christ, through Christ, you created all things, visible and invisible. Teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you reconcile all things. Motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind, and to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples and all who live on the margins of our societies. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers, especially our medical caregivers and those who work in assisted living facilities and long-term care. We pray, too, for those caring for loved ones at home. Give them courage, strength, grace, and good humor. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we learn together. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. God of grace, hear Hear our prayer. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace, hear Hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. In the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And And also also with you. Share the peace and the love of the Lord with one another.
Thank you for leading us in such joyful worship. Please stand for the offering prayer. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took the bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you as often as you partake of this do it in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. God of new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us out alive with justice, peace, hope, and love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Today we'll be serving communion by intinction again. And um, there is the picture of where everything is located in the chalice that is as you will be looking at it um, if you need the gluten-free wafers please tell your server and your server will just let you take those for yourself so we don't mix the wheat and the gluten-free wafers with our hands um, if you believe in jesus if you're following him and know that he is your savior you are so welcome to come and take in his real presence through the bread and the wine. He is here, he is with us, he comes to us now. The feast is ready. You are welcome here.
Allison, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for prayer. Let us pray. 
O oh God, God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let's close by singing, O Jesus, I have promised. in peace Christ is with you remember the poor thanks be to God have a good week everyone